In the first part of the series, I put this hem, first flange and hem on. For this next portion, I want to talk about creating cutout reliefs on the back side of these hems in these sharp corners. Now, in real world, I would have had a hem that runs across this bottom edge as well, and I would have had the same scenario in this corner. These corners aren't so much an issue with uh, with the material bunching up. These are more. This is a stretch condition, so that's a different condition. And the same thing with this. This isn't going to be as critical or as problematic as these tight, tight corners. Now, when I look at the back side of this, you'll see that this flange runs all the way down and around. In real world this area of material is going to bunch up as this bends over in multiple directions. This is going to have ripples and it's going to create all sorts of issues with formability. So we want to cut out any material in here that we feel we need to remove so the person that's making the tool has a very good indication of how to make the tool and how to form this piece of metal. Even if you don't do it, they're going to do something. They're going to elaborate on it. So it's best to try to move everything up front on the design. That way the person creating the tool isn't guessing as to what you need or require in this area. So here I have an image. You'll notice on this image, this flange runs up, this flange runs over, and as it comes into that corner, the material starts to cut away, dive in, and back up and around. This is a fairly sharp corner. And because of this, you really need to remove all this material in this area. If you don't, when this comes over and this comes over, you're gonna have all sorts of crinkling, or you're gonna have creases, or, or buckling, puckering. It's, you're not gonna be able to form this correctly, so you have to relieve this area in order to get proper formability. This is at the bottom of a door. Let me go back into my next session. The way I go about doing this is I like to lay out a frame of curves to represent the shape that I need. So I like to use curve on surface for this. What surface? Well, I'm just gonna use a single face and it's gonna be this face. My points, I'm gonna pick this edge and I'm going to pick, we'll say, this edge, right, right about there. For this one, I'm going to say infer G1. And for this one, I'm going to say infer G1 as well. So this allows me now to modify this, keep a nice, clean transition down to a logical area where the stress needs to be relieved. So with this, I can come back in, I'm using the edges, and approximate exactly what it is I need. Let me remove that, there we go. Now that I have my first curve in place, I need to do the same thing on the back side, or I should say on the upper side, excuse me. Curve on surface, single face, this face, my points, I want to use, again, this edge, G1, to this edge, G1. And I can, again, manipulate this, get it to exactly where I want. Once I have that, I'm going to select OK. Now I need to remove that material. So I'll just go back into my surface, trim sheet, pick my sheet. And my boundary is going to be this curve, this curve, and this curve. Select OK. Let me update my display so it looks clean. And here you can see a far more representative hem in those tight corners. Again, this is for relief, for formability. When I bend this flange over and I bend this flange over, if I don't remove this material, it's going to want to crease on top of one another or crinkle on top of one another. So this now gives me the relief that I need. This gives me the shape that the person creating the tool can aim for. And um, this way, the people that are doing the stress and the formability have a really good indication or idea of what those corners are going to look like. So this is a necessary part of your hem creation.